Kokoni 3D printer. Got one right here. Company provided it to me to demonstrate, and that's what I'm going to do here. This is aimed towards the uh, the student, the young person, someone just getting into it. Uh, it doesn't have all the complications, so I've read on uh, a lot of the other brands of 3D printers. So we're going to get this thing open and see what all is involved. And from what I've seen online a little bit and a little bit of research I've done, it should be pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, so as you can see, the box isn't real big, so this isn't a uh, really big 3D printer. But again, this is uh, geared towards the student, and I'm thinking that this would be a good thing to get one of my grandsons introduced into 3D printing. We'll see how this goes here. This box opened up. Oh, the box is a little wet. It's interesting. Okay, we have some boxes in here. Filament, it says on it. And then the printer itself is, as you can see there, it's wrapped up in plastic. It's a good thing. I don't know why this box is wet. It's not like it's rained. So let me get rid of this. And then figure out where to cut the tape at. So inside this bag we have another box. This thing's getting smaller and smaller. But again, it's not made for the big production runs, you know, like my other three, bigger 3D printers. This is again aimed towards the beginner, student, child. By child, I don't mean a three-year-old. I mean, it's got to be old enough to understand what's going on. There we are there, and there's some things inside here yet. You don't want to overlook, you have the power supply, little, little interesting looking wall wart. There is a manual here and a little Bowden tube clip. And there are some tweezers in here if I can get a hold of them. Right there. I believe that's it. Appears to be. Okay, within these boxes that came here is uh, filament. One of them orange and one of them is red. And it looks like it comes, uh, I haven't gone through the whole book here yet. It has a filament cartridge on the back. And you turn this little lever right here to unlock that. Okay, so the filament, and I opened up one of the boxes here of the uh, spare filament rolls, is uh, it comes already wound in its container. Whether or not you could take that apart and wind your own filament on, I don't know. I haven't looked into it that far yet. But that is how you take this on and off. And there's a little clip right, let me put this back on first. A little sprocket right here you need to line up. And lock that back down. This little clip right here you pull off and you can pull the Bowden tube out by pushing down on the collar. And this is already loaded with filament. So I can put my tube back in. If you were loading a new uh, cartridge, this is how you would do it. You would take this clip off and take the Bowden tube out. You would run your filament up through there and it will feed itself according to the app right here, which or the uh, instructions, which is really a fine print edition. But I'm sure there's something you could download. And like a lot of other 3D printers, uh, you cannot tether this to your computer. It's going to either have to be on Wi-Fi to their app or Bluetooth to their app. The power goes in right here. There's a power switch right next to it. You get that connected there. Turn this around so you can see the front of it. Now I'm going to have to get the app and download it. Okay, can you run this from your computer? Like a Windows PC or a Mac? No, you can't. It's run from either a uh, Android app or an iOS app if you happen to have an iPhone. So won't be doing it from the computer. And it's either done over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And I have my phone tethered to the charger. It's about dead. I hate doing things on my phone. But this is what we're going to have to do here. So I went to the Play Store and brought up the Kokoni 3D app. 
and underneath the app, I don't know if you probably can't see that over there, but everything's in Chinese, so hopefully the uh, app itself is in English, hopefully. So we'll get this loaded up. And this does have a little startup thing it needs to go through, so I guess I'll turn it on and let it go through its little startup routine. Okay, I'll open the app here. Got to agree to their terms, of course. Now I need to click to connect a printer. And I have to register. So you go to the login register page, a little thing at the bottom where it says account. Okay, my device it says email login. And I'll put me an email in there and a password of some kind. That little thing here you have to agree to accept by the user agreement, etc. Incorrect email or password. I hate this stuff. And I finally found a page where you can create an account. It's a little bit of fooling around. Now I got to do the thing, you know, make sure I'm not a uh, robot. So select everything with traffic lights. So hopefully now I can log in with the app. So what they're showing here in the book is after you open up the app, you can log in, register here, and it gives you a thing that will send a code to your phone. You put the phone number in, and you can verify there. However, that screen is not coming up on the app. So hopefully you can see this. This is what I get. It says log in and register. You put your mobile phone number in there. You're supposed to put the code in. There's nowhere on here it tells you to push or tap to send the code to you, so there's no way to get the code. Okay, after playing with this a little more, and this gets even worse, I put my number in and the, the little thing there that says code. You push on code, and then it sends you a little puzzle to solve. So once you push code, it gives you this little puzzle here. You're supposed to slide to complete the puzzle. Okay, I had to move operations here because uh, the Wi-Fi I have out in the shop is 5G. And this will not connect to 5G. It's got to be 2.4. So I moved it in here, connected everything through the phone. It, it was very, very simple. Everything connected right up. I did a sample print here. That's these little filament clips. I've already taken them loose from the bed. Uh, this thing is extremely easy to use. Uh, you don't really need any skill at all. So what I'm going to do here next is load another model and uh, you can watch it print. Okay, I don't know how well things are going to show down here, but I don't know if you can see that on my phone or not there. The little guy on the bottom left corner right there, the Rocket Dwarf. That's what I'm going to load up to print. With that guy there. Hopefully you can see all this, okay. So we're going to print that. And it'll load the model. And it's in two pieces here, as you can see. Hopefully you can see. Because I can't see what the next step. Come on. There we go. Next step. Down here and click on Start Printing. Select my printer. It's a Kokoni 3D EC1. And we'll just hit on Start Printing there. and it will preheat the bed and do all that kind of good stuff. Okay, this will run through a process. Uh, right now it's checking the device status, it validates the 3D model, checking the uh, filament surplus, and now it's preheating. So the bed will need to preheat before it can start printing. Okay, what it's doing now is homing, it is preheated. And you can watch the status of uh, everything it's doing on your phone or your tablet, depending on what you're using. So what it's doing now is laying down a purge. And of course you don't want to sit here while they, and try to watch this whole thing print. So 
we'll uh, be checking back on it from time to time. So if you're not familiar at all with the 3D printer, what it's doing right now is laying down its base layer, its first layers. And everything is built on top of that. And I don't know what the infill sitting is on this, but uh, on the phone app there it's telling me it is 20% complete. So as you can see there, it's moving right along. Got several of the uh, base layers in and it's starting on its infill and working its way on up. Okay, once this is finished printing, it will come out to the front here and you just lift this little magnetic sheet up and you flex this a little bit and your print will come right off. Yeah, along with supports, what you see there are what are called supports if you've never done this before. And there will be some supports to clean off on the side here which you can just pop right off like so. So there is the top half. In the bottom half here we also have some supports that can be popped off. So that's just support material, that's just garbage. So here's our little guy. Right there. And when you're done with this, you just clean the sheet off here. Now this still needs a little bit of cleaning, but I can do that later. And just a matter of uh, placing your PI sheet back in, a little magnet holds it down. And you are ready for the next project. So, who is this for? This is for the youth that's wanting to get into this. Uh, it, it'd be a great thing, I suppose, if someone was maybe eight years old and up, they would understand this. Or, of course, any child that's good with their phone, you know, how kids are with their phones anymore. If you're uh, very adept at using a smartphone, uh, you'll be able to use this real easy. Uh, is it for like a commercial production like what I do up in our loft? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, it's not made for that. It has a, uh, I think the working area in this is a 101 millimeter square, which would be way too small for uh, some of the things I produce and things that we sell. However, if you're into making uh, maybe small game pieces like for uh, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, uh, yeah, this would be ideal. It's not real fast but it doesn't need to be real fast. It's also not real expensive. And that is a major drawback with some of the bigger 3D printers. Uh, you're gonna get into spending a lot of money. And again, if you're just starting out and you're not real mechanical, there is literally no assembly to do here. You take it out of the box, you scan the QR code on the top here. I had to fumble around a little bit uh, out in the shop because I didn't have the right kind of Wi-Fi out there. I got 5G out there and I, it's just, will not connect to that, it's only 2.4G. Otherwise, this performs very, very well. Um, and it takes a virtual space. Uh, I'm sitting down here, this is where my sewing machine is located, and my sewing tables and so on. And although it is a commercial machine, and bigger than a home machine would be, uh, this table it's sitting on is not really all that big. And you can see this is a very, very small footprint. So you can very easily have this on a desk or a nightstand. And, uh, a, young person could just go at it and they can learn a lot about 3D printing. There's some other things you can do with uh, avatars and take a self-portrait and make a little figurine of yourself. I haven't done that. I'm probably not going to do that, but the, the capability of it's there. Uh, there's a lot of models online you can download. Uh, the one I'm printing right here is just one of their downloaded models. You can also create and design your own, of course, and you can upload them uh, to the Kokoni site. You can share them or you can keep them private depending on what you want to do. Uh, again, it does require a smartphone, either uh, Android or iOS, Apple. And no, you cannot run it off your computer. So is there any downsides to this printer? Well, you've got the, the small workspace, but again, for a youth learning, that's fine. It's not real, real fast. That's, and again, that's fine. You're learning. Learner to reasonable pace. Uh, something I don't like, and that's probably because I'm old, is I do not like doing things off my phone. I don't really even like taking phone calls, much less running apps off the phone, although this did work pretty well. Once I got through the little bit of the wireless connection out there and getting into the right uh, Wi-Fi, 
that's why we're located down here. Uh, it, other than that, um, I don't really have any complaints on it. Uh, again, I prefer to do things off my computer. I, I prefer to work from Cura. Uh, this does have, it looks, uh, proprietary filament holders. Whether or not you could take one of those apart and wind your own filament on it, I don't know. It's got 1.75 millimeter filament. So the big spools of filament you would buy for a conventional FDM printer would fit if you could wind it on there. I didn't take one of these apart. I'm not going to. This is going to be destined for one of my grandsons. He's uh, shown an interest in learning how to use a 3D printer and getting into some 3D printing. And he's a young guy. So this should be right up his alley. And I know he's into a lot of the different types of gaming and things. So I think it'll work out well for him. If uh, you'd like to get one of these, I'll put a link in the description. I'm sure they would be more than happy to sell sell you one, send one out to you. Uh, this was provided to me by Kokoni, again, to test demonstrate. Uh, again, the, there's no assembly at all to this. It's just extremely simple. I did, uh, in the first print, print a couple of little uh, filament clips, just as a quick thing to try out. The little bed in here, it's, it's a magnetic PEI bed. You can lift up the front of it, take it out. Flex it a little bit, your print will come right off. This has had excellent print adhesion. I haven't seen anything shifting or moving. Um, I'm looking at the infill on this model here. It's got some pretty good infill, so this particular model is going to take a while to print. But otherwise, neat little printer, kind of nifty little thing. And maybe if you're an adult and you've got a corporate office and you just want a little distraction, something to set on the corner of your desk, there you go, you could use something like that. If you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger, not in the shop, obviously. Might even sew something while I'm down here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.